This is a four loops mock test for grade 10 RT and we are dealing with the final question. Okay, so in this question we're dealing with a sonor even number. I don't know what sonor means. Sonor, sonor, I don't know. Sonor even number is a number that is, that is obviously I would say is an even number, is a sum of all its factors and other than itself and one is even, okay. And the sum of all its factors other than itself and one is greater than the number itself. Okay, so let's just read that again quickly. Sum of all its factors other than itself and one is even. So, okay, the factors are, are is even. And then if we sum all the factors, except for one itself, it's greater. The actual, if we sum them all, it's greater than the number itself. Okay, so let's work this out. So we're going to complete the button for the test button, which must test if a number is a sonor even number or not. So the message must be displayed like this. 36 is a sonor even number or 36 is not a sonor even number. So they give us 36 as an example. So let's take it. So all the factors of 36 besides 1 and itself. So 1 and 36 is a factor, but we don't count them. We know that 2 is a factor, 3 is a factor, 4 is a factor, 6 is a factor, 9 is a factor, 12 is a factor, 18 is a factor. Add all those numbers together and you get the number 54. And we know that 54 is an even, so that's one tick, and that 54 is bigger than 36, so that's the second tick, and therefore 36 is a Sonor number. Hmm, okay, well let's get to the code and see what we've got to do. So yeah, we've got the program. Boom, we're going to click on the test button, and we've already got the input. So I'm going to need to go through all the numbers and find out if it's got a factor. This is very similar to the prime number example. If you're not too sure, go look at our videos on how to do a prime number. I think it's in one of our videos. So let's do, we're going to do a for loop. Okay, and now if we did the prime numbers, if we did something with the prime number, if we counted the prime numbers, we would go from one to the actual number, our num, we would go from one to the actual number, and we would, this is our for loop, so I'm going to put in our begins and ends, end of the for loop, Okay, now we would check if each value r is a factor of r num. That's what we would do for the prime number. If r if r could divide into r num, so we could check if one can. So let's pretend that this is a thirty six. Okay, so we would say if can one go into thirty six? Can two go into thirty six? That, that's how we find all the because that's what we want. We find all the factors. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So we would check if we take r num and we divide it by r if it has no remainder, which means we don't need div, we need the mod. If we divide r into r num and we get no remainder, then we know that i is a factor of i num because r is going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's what we check it. We want to check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We want to check all those numbers and the moment we find 8, there's, that's a factor, that's a factor, that's a factor. The moment we find factors, we can, we would count them. That's what we do with the prime number. But now we're not, we're not doing that. We are finding the sum of those numbers, the sum of the factors, the sum of it. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so we want to sum it. So we need a sum variable, which I've got here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum variable for, for this for loop, begin, end. And this is the end of the if and the while we've got two dots there that's gonna be slash slash oh now it's messing up with me slash slash end of if okay so here we go so what we're gonna do every time i num divided by i gives me no remainder then i know i found a factor then i know i is a factor i'm going to take our sum and add r so that means we add in r to this list of the sum, which is going to sum all the factors. Now, where am I putting that? Well, I'm going to put that into our sum. Our sum is equal to whatever it is previously plus the R. So the very first time, well, well that's a problem. The very first time this runs, our sum doesn't have a value. So the moment you take a, a variable and add on to it or increase it or something, then you need to give it a default value, which means at the top here, before the loop, we need to initialize our sum. We need to give it a starting value. I'm going to start it at zero. So we know our sum, okay, I'm going to write here, our sum is a zero, boom. And R is going to, first of all, be a one, okay. So R is going to be zero the first time, and now R is going to become a one for the first for loop. Is one a factor of R of 36? Yes, it is. So our sum is going to be zero plus one, it's going to be a one, boom. 
then it's going to go and make an awesome now changes to that one so now r is going to become a 2 is 2 a factor of 36 yes it is so we take that 2 add it on to 1 and make that the new r sum so that becomes 1 plus 2 is 3 3 becomes r sum then i check 3 is 3 a factor of 36 yes it does go into 36 so then we take the 3 we add it on boom 3 plus 3 equals 6. So our sum is now equal to 6. Now we check 4. Is 4 a factor? Yes. So are we ever going to find a number that's not a factor of 36? Oh, such a funky number that. So 4, yes. So we're going to make 4 plus 6 is a 10. So our sum is 10. The sum of all the factors at the moment is at 10. When I get to a 5, thank goodness 5 is not a factor. So we can leave that. We're not going to do this code because it's not a factor. And when I get to 6, yes, 6 is a factor. So we take the 10 plus the 6 now becomes a 16 and so on and so on and so on. So this is going to find us the sum of all the factors for our num. But hmm, we must all the factors besides itself and one. So we mustn't include one and itself. And unfortunately, this code is going to include one. You saw when I did one, it did include it. So there's two ways of doing it. We could over here do an if statement to check if r is equal to one or if i is equal to r num. That, or... Let's just not start at one. Let's start not at one, but at position two. So that we skip one. And when we do our num, we don't want to get to our num. We want to get to one before our num. So we can actually say minus one from our num. So for example, if we're looking at the number 36, we are checking all the numbers from, we're saying from two to 36 minus one to 35. So that way we're checking all the factors that's not including one and not including 36. Does that work? And if I was if the, if I was looking for seventy, all the factors are seventy, it would check from two to sixty nine. Therefore, all it wouldn't include the seventy. Okay, so that's working there. So that'll give me a sum of all the factors except itself and one. So I won't include those. Okay, so that's just going to sum it. Now at the end of the loop, once the loop is finished, now we can go. There's two things. First of all, I'm going to need to check if the sum variable. If the sum of its factors is even, that's the first tick. So if our sum, how do I check if it's even? Well, there's you can either say mod 2 equals 0. That checks if it's even. If I divide it by 2 and there's no remainder, then I know it's even. That's one way. The other way, there's an odd function. So you could say if odd our sum equals to false, then it's an, it's an even number. If it was equal to true, it would be an odd number. So that's the one tick and the other tick is that the sum must be bigger than the number itself so the sum must be bigger than the number itself so the, the sum of it must be bigger than the 36 which is the r num so those are my two criteria and if those two criteria are correct then we can in that edit control not number edit answer dot text is going to equal to the actual number is a sin, sin all, even number sin all, I still don't know how to pronounce it if our num plus the word is a sin all, even number is that what they want me to say is a sin all, even number there we go but this whole thing must be a string to fit in that text property and the second part is a string but this part isn't our num is not a string must convert it from an int to a string so that it fits and we add that to a string so therefore the whole thing's a string there great so if it's a scenario number then great that plus that there we go or boom if it's not that if it doesn't meet those two criteria then it must else it must be not a scenario number so therefore this is the end of the else so then i'm going to do all this again i'm just going to copy and paste it Work smart, not hard, people. I'm just going to copy and paste, boom, paste it, and I'm say it is not a sonor number. But remember, with an else, there must no be no semicolon before it, and it's giving me errors here. Do you remember when you use an and? What must your conditions have? Brackets around the whole condition one, and the whole condition two, or however many conditions there are. Okay, so there we go. Brackets around conditions. If it meets those two criteria, then it's a sonor number. Let's see if it works. 
So it's like our prime number, except for instead of counting the, the factors, we are summing them and we're summing all of them except for the one and itself. So let's see. Boom! It is a synonym number. And if I take the number nine, nine is nine's factors are one, three, and nine. So three is not an even number, so that's not a factor. Okay. What about twelve? Twelve, the factors of twelve would be one, two, three. Three, four, six. that would be a Sonor number, I'm pretty sure. It's not a Sonor number. Why? Because let's work it out. Why, why is 12? The factors of 12 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, and 12. But we don't include 12 and we don't include 1. And if I add those numbers together, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 6 is 15, and that's not a... That's not a even number. Boom. Although it's bigger than 12, it's not an even number. It's not a sonor even number. So therefore, it doesn't count. Okay. So there we go. There is our code. For more videos on the smart test, as well as other Delphi-related videos, please go to our YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Like our videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.